Hi everybody, we're in differential equations, section 4.3, our second day, and as you can see at the top, we've got our learning target. I can solve linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. First, a little bit of review. Uh, when you had a second order differential equations, uh, the highest derivative was a second derivative, and you only have functions of x in front of a second derivative, first derivative, or the function itself, and it's set equal to zero, we made an assumption that uh, y equals e to the mx would be a solution. And uh, as long as uh, we've got some constant coefficients, I should say, that would be a very reasonable uh, type of a solution. So for this section right here where we're assuming y equals e to the mx, we're going to assume that we've got constants, real numbers out in front of y double prime, y prime, and y. Uh, well, we know that when we take uh, the second derivative, we'd have to use a chain rule twice. Two m's would come out. Uh, so we'd have uh, m squared times e to the mx. Uh, for the first derivative, just one m would come out from one chain rule. And if we divided e to the mx on the left side and on the right side, you would get this quadratic. This is such a great section right here. Take a look at the original differential equation. As long as we've got linear coefficients, I mean, a constant coefficients, pardon me, uh, we're going to be able to get some quadratics. And this is wonderful. When you solve either by factoring or the quadratic formula, uh, if you get two different values for uh, your solutions, uh, you would have e to the m1x, e to the m2x, put different constants there. Your general solution uh, would be such. If you get the same solutions, you get two solutions, but they're identical, you're going to notice that you'd still have e to the m1x, but your second solution would have an x factor out in front. Well, remember with a discriminant, you could have a discriminant that's positive, zero, or negative. When the quadratic formula had a discriminant that was negative, you know that you deal with some complex solutions, imaginary numbers. And that's what we're seeing in case three. Case three, wow, uh, that's the one where uh, we have alpha plus beta i, alpha minus beta i. Notice what is happening. We'd have e to the alpha x, and in parentheses, we'd have c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x. Well, you know, that was some nice review. Let's take a look. I think what's going to immediately jump out at you is, for example, one, you're going to see that we've got a higher order differential equation. And again, because we've got constant coefficients here, we can say, let's assume that y equals e to the mx is a solution. It's actually a very reasonable assumption, and it's always going to work as long as we have constant coefficients and a homogeneous differential equation here with zero on the right side. Well, here's what's really, really neat. This would then become m to the fourth minus 13m to the second plus 36 is equal to zero. And we can factor that. We'll have m squared and m squared. And you could say, well, my goodness, what could I multiply together to get 36 but to add to negative 13? Well, let's try a, a negative 9 and a negative 4. However, m squared minus 9 would factor. That's a difference of squares. m plus 3, m minus 3. Uh, this would factor into m plus 2, m minus 2. And uh, using the zero factor theorem, we'd get solving m equals negative 3, m equals positive 3, m equals negative 2, m equals positive 2. And then what would our solution look like? Well, we'd say, well, we've got some constant e to the negative 3x, a different constant 
e to the positive 3x. Here's a third constant, e to the negative 2x. Finally, here's our fourth constant, e to the positive 2x. Of course, you could have had these in any order. Uh, but look at what we're able to do very quickly now. Uh, at the end of the day, when you have a, a linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, we assume y equals e to the mx is a solution, we'll really wind up with polynomials. Uh, you know, we had quadratics in, on our first day. Now we're seeing that things could get a little bit higher. Uh, and that's okay. We could have a fourth degree polynomial. We could have, you know, higher powers. We'll factor and we'll solve and we'll be in good shape. One last problem. Let's take a look at, uh, again, a third derivative minus 8y equals 0. Tell you what, let's assume that y equals e to the mx is a solution. And when you do that, you're going to get m to the third minus 8. Now, please be careful. Here's where we can get into some trouble. Uh, I think sometimes kids look at this and they'll say, oh, add an 8, take a cube root. Uh, we have m is equal to 2, and we're done. There's our answer. But I hope you remember from your days in algebra, uh, algebra 1, algebra 2, AMA, you name it, uh, the highest power will tell you how many solutions you have. You're going to have three solutions here. And, uh, of course, your TI-89 can help you, but let's just review something. If I were to give you a to the third minus b to the third, that factors, and it factors into a minus b, a squared plus a b, plus b squared. Now, maybe your uh, Algebra 2 teacher or AMA teacher wrote a little acronym to help you with cubic factoring, and they might have written SOP. Uh, SOP is uh, really going to mean same, opposite, and positive. It's a little acronym right there. And you could say, well, when we start with something negative, you're going to see that you're going to have the same sign with a minus b. Inside, you'll have a squared, but, you know, we started with that minus, and, you know, inside the parentheses, we'll have a plus then. And then you're always going to end with something positive. Likewise, this doesn't apply here uh, for this particular problem, but just some good general review. If I had a cubed plus b cubed, if we had SOP, that would be a plus b, a squared. Now we need the opposite. We'd say minus a b, and then plus a b squared. Now I've got good news for you. On your TI-89, uh, under your F2, when you hit factor, uh, that's unbelievable. Your calculator can factor uh, this for you. We'll talk more about that at the end of the lesson. But uh, please understand what's happening here. When we have m cubed minus 8, this is really like an m to the third minus 2 to the third. This is like your a. This is like your b. So we'll go a minus b. That's m minus 2. And then we'll have a squared. Well, that's m squared plus ab. That's m times 2, or 2m, plus b squared. That's plus a4. And again, uh, an 89 would actually do that for you, too. That's pretty cool. Uh, now, the thing is, you've got a quadratic right here. And it's not going to factor. You could try all day. Uh, but what I do want to remind you of is the quadratic formula where you know that solutions to a quadratic would be opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And what do we have here? Well, your a would be a 1. You've got 1m squared. Uh, b would be a 2 and c would equal a 4. Uh, so 
what would we expect to get for our m here? Well, our m would be opposite of b, that's negative 2, plus or minus, we'd have 2 squared uh, minus a 4 times a 1 times a 4. Don't forget you got to divide by 2 times 1. And if we clean this up just a little bit, let's see what we've got here. This is a 4. 4 times 4 is 16. You know, you really have 4 minus 16 in here. That's a negative 12, isn't it? Down here is a 2. And my goodness, if we just kept going here, uh, we know that when you've got a negative inside, you're going to take out an i. Radical 12, though, is going to be 2 radical 3. So what are we really getting? Well, divide all these parts by 2. You get negative 1 plus or minus an i radical 3. So I guess what I'm really getting at is right here, whether you solve with your 89 or whether you solve by hand, you're going to get this for a solution. Uh, over here, we'd get m is equal to 2. And please remember that m was equal to alpha plus or minus i beta. So let's go ahead and get our general solution here. Well, we've got this thing starting with a 2. I'm going to say y is equal to, you can write that as y sub c if you'd like. Uh, this is our solution to this homogeneous differential equation. We could call this c1 e to the 2x, right? And then what? Well, we knew it was e to the alpha, right? If, if we just go back to our notes right here, it's e to the alpha x, right? And then inside we'd have c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x. Well, what's that really going to look like? Well, we're going to have e to the alpha is negative 1, so I could just write negative x. C1 right here, I'm actually going to call it a C2. I already used a constant. But beta is radical 3, so I'm just going to go radical 3x. And then we're going to say, well, we've got some other constant right here for a sine. Again, that's a radical 3x. And guys, this would be your general solution uh, to this differential equation. A couple other things before we wrap up. Let's just hypothetically say that, wait a minute, you've got not two repeated solutions, but three. What if it's m equals 2, m equals 2, m equals 2? Well, notice how we'd write that. You know, if it was a second one, we would have put an x. What if our answer gets repeated a third time? It would be x squared e to the 2x. And if we'd have four of them, then we'd have a c4 x to the third e to the 2x. I hope you get the idea. I think you can also see that sometimes solving can get to be a little bit precarious if it's ugly and... You know, you can use your 89 to get some help. C solve, you'll have to hit alpha C and then go to your F2 and go to solve. You can get your complex answers. We're going to see in the near future that C factor is actually a better choice. You're going to see why with duplicate answers, especially for complex, this can help you. C factor... Uh, Please understand, you could, if you wanted to, you don't have to do math, algebra, complex. You could just hit alpha C and then go to your F2 and hit factor. And then you'll see C factor out in front. So uh, you don't have an equation at that point. You just go C factor. So... Uh, you could check this out yourself. Uh, what if you did C factor, and then if you did x to the second 
plus 2x plus 4. Again, notice what you're going to have to do. You'll have to say comma x. You always have to say, hey, this is the variable that I'm factoring with respect to. And uh, nicely, it's going to be able to get you, uh, you know, some answers. Check that out. You know, see what it looks like. We're going to talk some more about that later. Hope this lesson is going well. I hope you can see it's very, very much tied to our first dip.